This slide is showing us the major effects of the thyroid hormone, which are T3 and T4 in the body. So let's take a little um, closer look at this. We can see in the first column is the process or system affected. So the basal metabolic rate is a major function of the thyroid hormone, temperature regulation as well. So these are the normal physiological functions. And in the case of hyposecretion, so all of these would be hypothyroidism. The thyroid is not acting where it should. And in the last column is the effects of hyperthyroidism, which is a hypersecretion of it. So notice that in this case for metabolism that the BMR, the basal metabolic rate is above normal. This increases body temperature, heat tolerance, increased appetite, weight loss whereas hypothyroidism is just the extreme opposite of this. The next column or the next row is carbohydrate, lipid, and protein metabolism. So as we would expect for hyperthyroidism, there's an increased catabolism of glucose. The molecules that we need for fuel are broken down much faster, a higher metabolic rate. For the nervous system in hyperthyroidism, the person is, has irritability, restless, they have trouble sleeping. For the cardiovascular system, there is increased ses sensitivity to catecholamines. These are things like epinephrine and norepinephrine, basically adrenaline, palpitations, high blood pressure. So it can be very bad for the cardiovascular system. And we see some other effects in different systems here as well the muscular system, skeletal system, and so on. So our next slide shows us a homeostatic imbalance and kind of an example of what we just talked about. So the hyposecretion, the hypothyroidism in adults leads to myxedema. In this case, the symptoms include a low metabolic rate, low BMR, puffy eyes, feeling chilled, constipation, edema, and if it's due to a lack of iodine, a goiter may develop because of that. And that's due to a lack of iodine. It decreases the thyroid levels. So it's kind of like there's less iodine to make the T3 and the T4. This is going to cause a negative feedback sign that triggers more TSH secretion. So in the end, the thyroid enlarges. So the thyroid is critical for brain development, growth, also all throughout our life, but especially for children and early development. So congenital hypothyroidism, it's caused usually by poor development of the thyroid gland. So maternal medications could cause this. They um, could just be asymptomatic where they, there's really not any, it's not related to any original problem and it's very, very crucial, and it's usually lifelong. So on the next slide, we see a couple of these thyroid disorders here. For letter A, we see an enlarged thyroid, and that's due to iodine deficiency. So that would be an example of hypothyroidism. And again, this is gonna cause this feedback loop to increase TSH, whereas on the right side we see exothalamus, which is um, hype due to hypersecretion of T3 and T4, Graves' disease. So the homeostatic imbalances that we just looked at, um, the most common is Graves' disease. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease where the body is making abnormal antibodies that are attacking its own follicular cells causes more and more thyroid hormone to be released, leading to hyperthyroidism. So make sure you know the homeostatic imbalances for related to the thyroid gland, so in addition to Graves' disease, also um, cretinism is hypothyroidism, so inadequate production of thyroxine. So the thyroid gland not only does it produce the thyroid hormone, but it also produces calcitonin. And calcitonin, its main job is to reduce blood, the blood concentration of calcium. 
So there's two groups of cells in the thyroid. There's the follicular cells, and then there's the parafollicular cells. The parafollicular cells are going to secrete calcitonin. It's the antagonistic hormone to parathyroid hormone, which means it has the opposite effect. And it will uh, get, it lower the calcium blood level, so it stimulates calcium uptake into the blood, for example. So for the parathyroid gland, the most important hormone um, for calcium regulation comes from it, called parathyroid hormone or parathormone. And there are yellow-brown glands that are embedded in the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, so the, on the back. And PTH is extremely important in calcium homeostasis. It is secreted in response to low blood calcium levels, so that would be the stimulus that causes it to be released. In, so to increase blood levels to back to normal. The target organs are where we would expect for calcium, skeleton, kidneys, intestine. And these are the three areas where the calcium goes into the bloodstream. So the body takes the calcium from the skeleton first, then the kidneys and the intestine next. So if somebody has hyperparathyroidism, meaning it's too high, that can cause a destructive effect on the skeletal muscle, or I'm sorry, skeletal system, because it's taking too much calcium out of the skeleton and into the blood, thus making the skeleton weak. So the parathyroid glands we can see shown here on the posterior side. We're looking at the thyroid gland from the back and you can see the parathyroid glands. And histologically, they look like this. They secrete parathyroid hormone. So remember the thyroid gland produces T3, T4 and calcitonin and parathyroid gland produces PTH. So this chart is showing us how the levels of calcium are increased. So the stimulus for this would be low blood calcium. That's called hypocalcemia. The direct response to this is for PTH to be released from the parathyroid glands. And the parathyroid hormone then will cause calcium to come out of one of these tissues based on the need. So the first one would be the blood. And when this happens, osteoclast activity is activated. That causes brain, uh, bone resorption and calcium and phosphate are now released into the blood to bring those blood calcium levels back to normal. Also in the kidney, calcium can be reabsorbed from the kidney tubules. So instead of it exiting the body in the urine, it's going to go back into the bloodstream. Again, thus increasing the blood calcium levels. And then finally, calcium absorption happens where more calcium is absorbed from the food in the small intestine. So the end result is that the calcium goes back to normal levels in the blood. So we have a negative feedback system shown here. So this slide is showing hyperparathyroidism. And again, this can cause a weak skeletal system, weak bones, because calcium is going to leach from the bone, causing the bones to soften and deform. And it also contributes to the formation of kidney stones because the calcium, there'd be more calcium in the kidney tubules. And finally, there is a disease which is osteitis fibrosa cystica, resulting from severe form of hyperparathyroidism resulting in easily fractured bones. So all these can, can occur because of increased PTH. Whereas hypothyroidism results in tetany, respiratory paralysis, and sometimes death possibly.